The most used Rome 134A refrigerant gas pressures are 1. To achieve a temperature of minus 20 degrees Celsius in the evaporator, equivalent to minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit, a low gauge pressure of 0.32 bars is needed, equivalent to 4.70 PSIG or 32 kilopascals. 2. To reach a temperature of minus 15 degrees C in the evaporator, equivalent to 5 degrees Fahrenheit, a low gauge pressure of 0.63 bars is required, equivalent to 9.26 PSIG or 63 kilopascals. 3. To achieve a temperature of minus 5 degrees Celsius in the evaporator, equivalent to 23 degrees Fahrenheit, a low gauge pressure of 1.42 bars is needed, equivalent to 20.87 PSIG or 142 kilopascals. 5. To reach a temperature of 0 degrees C in the evaporator, equivalent to 32 degrees F, a low gauge pressure of 1.92 bars is needed, equivalent to 28.22 PSIG or 192 kilopascals. 6. To achieve a temperature of 5 degrees Celsius in the evaporator, equivalent to 41 degrees Fahrenheit, a low gauge pressure of 2.49 V is needed, equivalent to 36.60 PSIG or 249 kilopascals. In some cases, it is useful to know the pressure of the equipment when it is turned off, and the high pressure or the condenser, let's see them. 1. For an external environment temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, the equipment turned off with this temperature, it has a manometric pressure, both high and low, according to the table of 6.70 bar, equivalent to 98.49 PSIG or 670 kilopascals. 2. For an outdoor environment temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, the condenser temperature is usually about 10 degrees Celsius, above the environment where the equipment is located, thus in the table, for 40 degrees Celsius, about 104 degrees Fahrenheit. The high gauge pressure in the condenser is 9.18 bar, equivalent to 134.94 PSIG or 918 kilopascals. 3. On the screen we have the table of capillary sizes for Rhone 134A. This table has been designed only for those cases where you do not know the cooling capacity of the compressor. We can see that the table takes as a reference the maximum electrical power admitted by the compressor in HP. Thus, for example, for a fifth HP compressor with an evaporator that works at an evaporation temperature of minus 6.7 degrees Celsius, it is equivalent to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Now on the screen we have the capillary size table for Rhone 134A, but now taking the cooling capacity as a reference. 1. Let's start by saying that the capillary tubes depend on both their length and their diameter to determine their total restriction. 2. The mission of the capillary is to delay the passage of refrigerant that reaches the evaporator to maintain the low pressure that causes the suction of the compressor. 3. The two variables to take into account for the selection of the capillary are mainly the evaporator temperature and the cooling capacity or cooling capacity of the compressor. 4. We must not confuse the cooling capacity with the electrical power of the compressor, the latter normally measured in HP. 5. There are tables that allow you to select the capillary taking as a reference the electrical power of the compressor motor in HP. However, it is best to use the cooling capacity of the compressor, measured in BTUs per hour, kilocalories per hour, or watts. 6. The problem with using HP as a selection parameter is that for the same value of this, you can have different cooling capacities, since it will influence the efficiency of the compressor. 7. 
A percentage change in capillary diameter can change the flow of refrigerant to the evaporator more than an equal change in capillary tube length. 8. However, the restriction offered by the capillary can also be changed by lengthening or shortening the tube, using this method for final calibration. 9. The time comes, when reaching extra long lengths of the capillary, to increase the restriction and reduce the flow, is not only uneconomical, but frequently useless. 10. As the length of the capillary tube decreases, the flow slowly increases until the critical point is reached, where the flow rate increases more rapidly with each reduction in length. 11. If the length is further reduced, a point is reached where a further decrease in the length of the capillary causes an ever-increasing flow. 12. When the capillary tube is so short, even small changes in its length will cause large increases in flow. This is due to the fact that length no longer affects flow, and the tube now begins to act more like an orifice than a capillary tube. As with all general rules, of course there are exceptions. But for daily operation, staying within this range will eliminate many problems. These are the main features of RM-134A that you should know about. Uno. 1. RM-134A does not harm the ozone layer. 2. RM-134A is not flammable, classified as A1. 3. RM-134A is non-toxic, classified as lone. 4. RM-134A refrigerant gas has a global warming potential of 1430. C5. The RM-134A refrigerant has no slip. This means that its temperature remains constant during the phase change, as long as the pressure does not change. 6. RM-134A has great stability and compatibility with most materials. 7. Rhone 134 a that is a refrigerant that replaces R12 for automotive air conditioning and refrigeration and air conditioning equipment, which requires an oil change. 8. Rhone 134 a is widely used in domestic refrigerators. 9. RM-134A refrigerant gas is widely used in screw and centrifugal type chillers. 10. Widely used by the company's Thermal King and Carrier in their refrigeration equipment for positive temperature transport. 11. Since RM-134A is a refrigerant with no mixed components, it can be charged in a liquid or gaseous state. The 12. It is not necessary to turn the container with coolant or use the outlet of the liquid. 13. As the evaporator temperature value begins to drop, the charge by weight becomes more important. 14. The RM-134A works with oil of the PO type. 15. RM-134A is not miscible with mineral and alkyl benzene type oils. 16. RM-134A in automotive air conditioning applications uses pad type oil.